Good morning, lovely Saturday morning. You are welcome to Health Matter and on top Health Matter. You know, say nothing else we will do than to talk about uh, health related issues. That is things we get to do with we health. Remember, I said they say person we get health. Now, where it ain't get any it's all all life here. Mm. That is to say, no matter the amount we do our bank account, now my person they are life conscious. Yes, so. And if you spend them, so therefore, therefore, so make we take good care of our health. And to talk about health, uh, we get a certified medical doctor, also a medical consultant. I'm talking about the CEO of uh, Grace, Grace Valley. Valley. No other person but Dr. Bart Ofebolam. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Chief. How are you doing, sir? So pleased to be back this morning. Pleased to have you. Slimmest. Doctor, good, good morning, morning, sir. Yeah, good, good to morning. have you, too. Yeah, Slimmest. thank you very yes, much. Yes, baby. Once again. Yeah, good morning. Of course, good morning to everybody who really join us for this segment. We've seen before. It's good to see you guys again. Yeah, mm. thank you very much. <laughs> good morning, viewers at home and around the world. We're happy to be back this morning on Health Matter. WAP TV Health Matter. Don't forget... Uh, last week we celebrated our two years on the Saturday. Yeah. Okay. And a number of people won some special prizes, but they've not called to redeem their prizes. If you're mm -hmm. watching today, I would like you to give us a call at the end of this program so that we can get across to you with your wonderful prizes that you actually won last week. But this morning we are moving a step forward. We are going to a brand new topic. Mm -hmm. We are talking about hypertension today hypertension. Don't forget, uh, May 17th of every year is regarded as World Hypertension Day. World Hypertension Day, usually celebrated on the 17th of May of every year. And also, 29th of September this year, we are going to celebrate World Heart Day. Mm. So most likely we'll have a guest presenter we we'll have a guest uh, uh, consultant in our midst next week to do justice to the topic. Mm -hmm. So in line with these uh, events that are coming up, we've decided to prepare our mind about what we need to know about hypertension. Okay. okay? Now, we're going to take it uh, in this format. Number one, we'll give the definition of hypertension. We'll talk about the anatomy and physiology of the heart as well as the circulatory system or cardiovascular system. When you talk about cardiovascular, cardio means related to the heart, vascular related to the blood vessels. We'll, we'll understand that fully when we go into the topic proper. Then next we'll, we'll talk about types of hypertension as well as causes or risk factors. Okay, Among mm. the risk factors, we're going to talk about Modifiable risk factors as well as non-modifiable non risk, risk factors. factors. And of course, we'll go as far as diagnosis, prevention, as well as treatment if we have the time. So once again, I want to welcome everybody to the uh, Health Math on Web TV. Topic today is hypertension. Now, what is hypertension? Before now, at least everybody has an idea of what hypertension is is all about. Okay, I'll give a simple def definition of hypertension. An abnormally elevated and sustained blood pressure. Mm. Two keywords there. There must be an abnormal elevation and it must also be sustained. Okay, in some instances, we could have some events in life, some stressors in life, like injuries that can cause a temporary incre increment or increase in one's BP. Of course, when, the, when, that, uh, when that is taken care of, the mm. BP drops back to normal. So that is not hypertension, okay? Number one, it must be abnormally elevated. Number two, it must be sustained, okay? Now, we're also going to look at the, newer, the newest or latest uh, classification guidelines that we have for hypertension. Before now, we know the threshold of hypertension to be 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. I can tell you that has changed in mm -hmm. the last couple of in the last two years, precisely uh, uh, in the month of November 2017, okay, the world uh, yes. welcomed a new set of guidelines for classification of the values of blood pressure. And we're going to see that. So Today. if you'll be measuring your BP and having a figure in the neighborhood of 130, 135 over 90, and you feel that your home and dry, that is not anymore. By the time mm. you hear the new guidelines, you actually know where you belong. Now, with this new set of guidelines, it has actually, yes, we'll have it displayed on our screen at the moment. Okay. It has, that within this new, this new set of guidelines, 
it has actually thrown up a number of challenges. But positive challenges, I must also point out. At the moment, nearly half of all, all American adults, mm -hmm. about 46%, are said to have hypertension. Okay, so in this part of the world, we are not too good with statistics. Okay, now, with the, the new guidelines, before now, the last guideline that was being used previously was the N uh, JC guideline of 2003, okay? Mm -hmm. That was the guideline that was previously being used, which has a threshold, which has a threshold of 140 over 90 as a cutoff. I'm talking about J JNC7 guideline. Now, that has been replaced with a new guideline that were put together by a number of uh, 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 experts on the field. In fact, it was said that about nine different organizations alongside American Academy of uh, Card uh, American Academy of Cardiology with American Heart Association alongside nine different uh, experts in the field okay and the people that sat down to actually put it down in writing were about 21 scientists mm -hmm. okay so this replaced what we previously have talking about the 140 over 90 yes the JNC 7 guideline of 2003 now before now what we know as normal blood pressure is when you have a BP of 120 over 80. Normal. Normal. Okay. Now, but the threshold prior to this time used to be at least 140 over 90. That's millimeters of mercury. Now, right. when you're above it, before now, you're mm -hmm. regarded as being hypertensive. Mm -hmm. But that have, that, that have been dropped at the moment to, if you have a BP of 120 over 90, 120 over 80, you're within the normal range. Okay. Okay. okay? Your BP is said to be normal. Mm. It's being displayed on our screen at the moment. Now, if you have a BP of 120 to 129 mm. over 80, is considered elevated. Mm. Not hypertension yet. It's considered elevated. But if you have a BP of 130 to 139, over 80 to 89 is considered hypertension stage one, okay? And what previously used to be uh, stage one hypertension has moved over. So 140, anything above 140 over 90 becomes hypertension stage two. Hmm. So everybody should strive to at least achieve a BP of 120 over 80. That is what is said to be normal. So if you're in the neighborhood of 120 to 129 over 80, you should start making efforts. Mm. Because it's been said that at this level of BP, mm -hmm. at, at, at this elevated level, mm -hmm. not yet BP, mm -hmm. okay, you have twice, uh, your, 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 so, such a person has twice, uh, the risk of such a person having, having heart attack mm. is twice at that stage. Now, this Two stages before 140 mm -hmm. 90, prior to this this uh, this uh, new classification, used to be known as prehypertensive uh, stages or prehypertension stages, but not anymore. So the target now is 120 over 80. That is what everybody should strive normal. to achieve. Yes, that is what is normal now. So if you have a BP of 135 over 85, you, you are already hypertensive. hypertensive. <laughs> you have hypertension, according to this latest guideline put together by American Academy of uh, Cardiology as well as American uh, Association of uh, American uh, AHA, American Heart Association. Dr. Okay. Bart, you know, this, sorry, Chief. Yeah, I, I realize that these days, uh, I think it is no longer about the age. Because I remember growing up, if you never enter 40, you know, maybe Since early 40 or 60s, you know, if you really they talk about being hypertensive and all of that. But now these days, I've seen people that are in their 30s and they are carrying 150. You know, so really, what is responsible? Because you wouldn't tell me that as of then there was no stress. Is it based on what we eat now? Because like what you said, you know, things are actually changing now. So we don't really have the usual rate or the normal rate you used to have then. So what is really responsible for Thank you for that very, uh, very good question. I, I, must, I must start by saying that age is still a risk factor. Okay, it's still a very strong risk factor when you're talking about hypertension. Because apart from age, there mm. are other risk factors that we're going to talk about, mm. okay? But age is still a very strong risk factor. But 
with, with the uh, west, uh, westernization of uh, most of our diets, mm -hmm. it has actually tilted people into having early hypertension. Mm. Okay, as well as uh, as well as uh, 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 unhealthy lifestyle mm. practices. Mm. Okay, that people get into as even a much younger age. Mm. You see a lot of uh, youths that are in their twenties taking to uh, substance abuse mm. and what have you. Some of these things have been found to uh, uh, aid hypertension. Mm. Yes, mm. to increase one's risk of having hypertension alongside uh, uh, unhealthy practices like smoking. Mm and alcohol, excessive drinking. excessive drinking of alcohol. But we see plenty of that when we, uh, when we go into the um, no, no, no. I want risk us, factors. I want us mm. to start very uh, gently because it's our first take on it, so it can extend for the next yeah. two to three mm -hmm. weeks. So as you start, we will be uh, giving some questions too. So let's do this now, sir. Number mm. one, mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about hypertension, you've given us the meaning. Mm -hmm. My very first question, domestic as it may sound, most people these days now, you see uh, everybody buying the kit. <laughs> that uh, thing mm. that they put here. My, my question now is, sir, if we buy it, can we trust it or must we come to hospital, let them use the buff, buff down the <laughs> pump? Or uh, is it the same thing? Is it the manual or that uh, battery that will do blah, 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 blah. Wow. Can Some they even wear watch. Uh -huh. yeah. Can we mm. bank on mm. those things, sir? Thank you very much for that very important question. Yes, we can trust them. Okay. As a matter of fact, as what we refer to as white collar hypertension, for someone who probably had a good BP, who probably took a good read, who took a reading while he or she was in his house before getting to the hospital, he probably took with his own uh, battery powered uh, uh, device, he probably was able to get a good reading, say 140 over. Oh, that, 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 that's not a, yeah, a good not reading a, anymore. anymore. Yes, 120 <laughs> okay, over well, 80. Assuming he got a reading in the neighborhood of 140 over 90, he probably gets to the hospital as he stands up and a whole lot of things will refer to that as white collar hypertension. Mm -hmm. If they check in the hospital environment, it could go as high as 160 over 100. And the person will be wondering, this wasn't what I got in my house. How come he has jumped up to this? Okay, so this home measurement will help one to be able to keep a good tab, mm. okay, on his B, on his or her BP measurements for people who probably encounter this, but will still come to that, will still encounter this challenge when they get to the hospital. Okay. Because ideally, there are some specific things that need to be done before one can actually get an accurate reading mm -hmm. in a hospital environment. Mm -hmm. Number one, if the person steps into the hospital, you need to give the person some time to relax, mm -hmm. say about five minutes before okay. you can ask the person okay. to sit, okay? Now, apart from... But having the person to relax before taking the measurement, the number of, oftentimes, the number of uh, uh, errors that could come from the individual that is taking the BP. Mm -hmm. With all due respect, that is not to say that such an individual may not be very well qualified to do the work he or she is doing. So you can imagine the situation where that happens, you see that often with females. Mm -hmm. When they get to the hospital, usually where they take the vital signs in some hospitals is an exposed area. Okay, so instead of uh, stressing the person by asking the person to probably take off his or her top in order to expose mm. uh, the region where you want to take the blood pressure, you may decide to say, okay, madam, don't worry. And then the next thing is that you're tying the cuff mm. around the person's cloth. Yes, mm. most people mm. they do. Or you, you probably could ask the person to, uh, to fold up the fold cloth. Up the mm. If the person does the folding, it can actually tighten and grip um, the blood vessels. Yes, mm -hmm. grip the skin, thereby constricting the, uh, the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of this can actually lead to wrong reading, mm -hmm. getting, mm -hmm. long, okay, get getting the wrong reading yes. in a hospital setup. Also, the, the instrument that you have to use the right instrument, for instance, the BP apparatus you're going to use must have an appropriately sized cuff. The mm. cuff is the stuff that you tie yeah, that on you the, tie your yes, that you tie on the mm. hand, on the arm. Okay, now, you also need a good stethoscope because you need to you need to uh, yeah. put it on the cubital fossa on a particular portion, not just any portion. Now, where you put it on the cubital fossa is about the place where you have the uh, brachial artery running over, so that you be able to get a good uh, no no a good uh, sound. A sound yes. Should that, that be pulse? Do you call that pulse? Yeah, it's also you, you can actually refer to it as pulse, which of course you can also pick lower down here. And mm. of course, the mechanism of taking the BP itself matters. Okay. Sometimes, the person whose BP you're taking, you must ensure 
that you're not talking with the person at oh. the time the BP is, mm. is, mm. is being taken mm. because mm. that can actually affect the reading. Okay. Now, when you when you have done all of this, you can, you will still need to compare whatever reading you get from a particular hand with another one and probably take the average. That's only when you can say that you've gotten a good reading. Also, when the person gets into the doctor's office too, in some cases, almost always, a doctor may like to take a second look, mm -hmm. going by what he, he what must is, have seen yeah. to make yeah. a yeah. Yeah. science. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, to make a comparison and a number of other things. But before we go into all of that, very quickly, I want us to talk about the uh, circulatory system of the heart. Okay, so that we can understand. Uh, which, which we will be back to do anyways. But, uh, well, uh, Dr. Bart, you don't, tell, you don't take us through the meaning of uh, what hypertension is. We'll go on this short break and we shall be right back. Yeah. It's just the beginning. Go nowhere. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Cram. Welcome to another MedCram Lecture. We're going to talk about hypertension guidelines and specifically the new guidelines that just came out in November of 2017 in comparison to the JNC7 guidelines that are now 14 years old. They came out in 2003. So let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to give you a sense about what's happened between these two periods of time. And to do that, I'm going to split the screen into two areas. And on the left, we're going to have J and C7. And now we're going to have the 2017 guidelines here on the right. Uh, I want to kind of break this up into the systolic blood pressure just for clarity. So here at the bottom, we're going to have 120. And then as we move up, we'll have 130. And then even as high as 160. Now, I'll add the diastolic numbers in a moment, but I think the guidelines are easier to remember initially with just the systolic numbers. In JNC7, they said that anybody less than 120 was going to be okay in terms of systolic blood pressure, and that was considered to be normal. When they hit 120 all the way up to 140, that was considered to be what they called, it was kind of a weird term, but they called it pre-hypertension. And this was supposed to be a yellow light, kind of like a traffic light that occurred here at 140. And this was supposed to give pause to people who had blood pressures between 120 and 140. And then they went out full and said, okay, you have hypertension stage one if you're between 140 systolic and 160 systolic. So this was definitely red light area here. And that was known as stage one. And then things got really bad up here if you were above 160, and that they called stage two. So the thing about JNC7 was that you had this normal range, which is where they knew you had to be to make sure that you didn't have an increased probability of having morbidity from hypertension like stroke or coronary artery disease. And then there was this kind of gray zone where it was pre-hypertension and they recommended kind of diet lifestyle changes and things to try to get that down because they knew there was an increased risk. But they really didn't call hypertension hypertension until you hit this magic number of 140. And I'll put here in small 140 over 90 because that was the key area. So what's with the new guidelines? Well, the new guidelines also agree, and they've kept it this way, that less than 120 is normal. No question about it. However, for the first time, They've gotten rid of pre-hypertension. Instead of pre-hypertension, they still have this yellow zone here, but they're calling it elevated. So between 120 and 130 now, whereas before that was pre-hypertension, they're now calling it elevated blood pressure. Now, between 130 and 140, they're now saying you have high blood pressure, and they're calling that stage one. Basically, anything above that is stage two. So you can see very clearly here that they've condensed the strata and made them lower, which means that for any given blood pressure, you're going to see that people are going to be ruling in for hypertensive disease. Still 120 is the cutoff, but you can see for people, for instance, in this range, this 130 to 140, whereas before they had pre-hypertension, now they're going to be having hypertension. So this is the new standard here. It's the 130 
and I'll put here in small in terms of diastolic this is really 130 over 80 so anything more than 130 over 80 so the 140 over 90 is out the new blood pressure is the 130 over 80 however however this range between 140 and 130 they're not recommending medications or, or pharmacology here right off the bat what they're recommending it for is a subsection of these people who are between 130 and 140 and who are they recommending it for they're recommending it for people who already have coronary artery disease and if you think about it these people with coronary artery disease should already be on medications anyway but then the other people are those with at least a 10 percent risk of coronary artery disease if they don't already have it so what they're trying to do here is they're trying to institute medications earlier in select people and the other thing that they're really trying to do is they're trying to take these people who were pre-hypertension before and it had a connotation that you're not quite there yet and they're telling them no you're elevated you have elevated blood pressure and we're hoping here that you're going to start thinking about diet and lifestyle which is really where they're trying to push this is instituting diet and lifestyle early so they have some interesting things to say about that because some studies have come out since 2003 about that particular thing. They had some recommendations as well. And actually, they came with the actual reduction in blood pressure that could be associated with each of these reductions. So they said that there was about a four to five millimeter of mercury, and that may sound small, but you have to remember that any particular drug is anywhere from 7 to 10. Uh, so this is not that weak in terms of its effect. But if you wanted a 4 to 5 millimeter reduction in blood pressure, you've got to do a low-sodium diet, increase dietary intake of potassium, exercise, and limit alcohol intake for a man less than 2 and for a woman less than or equal to 1 drink. But... At the same time, what they found was that if you wanted to have an 11 millimeter of mercury drop, decrease sodium intake, decreased saturated fats, increased fruits and vegetables, and increased grains. They had the same recommendations that they've had in the past regarding the four different categories of medications, the ACE ARB, the beta blocker, the calcium channel blocker, and the diuretics. They said that all of these are first-line agents to use except the beta blocker, so not a first-line agent. Of course, beta blockers would be great if the patient has concomitant coronary artery disease. Again, as they've said in the past, that you should not use ACE and ARBs together, that that wouldn't be good to watch out for them if there is increased potassium because all of these increase potassium, so you want to be careful of that. They also said that in African Americans, you want to use the calcium channel blocker or the diuretics. They seem to work better in African Americans, and this is what they've said in the past. In terms of diuretics, even though a lot of people use hydrochlorothiazide, the actual studies have been with chlorothaladone. It's once daily. There is some evidence that it actually is more efficacious, and again, they're recommending chlorothaladone, unless, of course, the GFR is less than 30, in which case thiazide diuretics don't work very well when the GFR is 30, then you switch to Lasix. And Lasix is also a good option for patients with low ejection fraction from heart failure. Preoperative issues they've talked about before, you don't really want to stop a beta blocker if a patient's going into an operation. So the recommendations haven't changed much in terms of the medications that are taken. And if you want more information on all of those types of medications and more, make sure you watch our video on hypertension. But what's really changed is the classification. And this will result in about 46 to 47% of adults in the United States as having hypertension, which means that they would have a blood pressure that is elevated or greater than 120. And that's a pretty significant portion of people in the United States to be deemed as having elevated blood pressure. But again, this is under the guise of getting on things more early and uh, treating that. There are explanations out there for these new guidelines, and I encourage you to look those up. Thanks for joining us.
health matter na serious matter oh. That na why we they always get Dr. Bat Ufe Gunam every Saturday to come teach us and enlighten us on top with health matter. You fit also advertise your product and services on top with show where they help let people. Terms and conditions apply, Shao. For advert placement and sponsorship, make una call Stella Maris on top 070-3914-5229. Rebecca, 070-6969-1950. Faith, 081-7314-7426. Yes, you are welcome back to the show. I took my time and I <laughs> listened instinctively. If you follow the statistical and that uh, diagrammatical analysis, you don't know where you did. You don't know where we did that now. <laughs> <laughs> According to Slim, you don't know where we did. <laughs> and even you will believe say you know get some before. I hope you are already having a rethink. Let us actually note that uh, from what we hear, number one, they make us realize it did very efficacious fruit. Hmm. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, take and play. Yes, also, if you watch that video very well, they say we gather 100 persons, 22 get hypertension, and now only four Man. they control. Now, them they work with doctors. So, on that, I uh, will say thank you very much for that. Yeah, uh, material. very explosive very video. Material. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, at, at the time we took it, uh, took hypertension, I think uh, in 2017, we were still that <laughs> guideline was not yet out. <laughs> okay, but a whole lot have changed yes, I'm over agree. the years. Yes. And of course, we have to be at par. We have to move with time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sure viewers will have a number of questions to ask along that line. Numbers are even okay, so let me let phone line so that we can... Okay, so Isha, as a matter of fact, Limi has two questions already on ground for doctor. So uh, just before I ask mine, I think you guys have the uh, you have the privilege to ask yours also. 081054 Of course, 081 one four seven five eight nine. Please help us turn down your TV volume so that we can get as many calls as possible. Doctor, now over the years, eh, I don't, I really don't know what relationship sort has to do with um, hypertension. Okay. But most times, I don't lazy area. I don't take too much of salt. If you take too much of salt, it will lead to hypertension. We okay, have we have job. Oh, you see, people were actually waiting. <laughs> good morning, Jambu. <laughs> Hello, good morning. How good you morning. Doing? Uh, Help my tap before. Yes, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to go straight to the point. Then. Please, in the new. I want to ask: Is there any relationship between blood sugar and blood pressure? And is it possible for somebody to have high blood pressure with low blood sugar? That's my question. Good okay. question. Thank you very All right. much. All okay. right. Okay. Thank you very <laughs> much. Uh, is it possible for someone? Let me start from the second one. Is it possible for blood sugar? Yes, okay. if it's possible for someone to have high mm. blood pressure with low blood, blood sugar, sugar. Yes, the answer is the answer is yes. Hmm. It's possible for one to have that. Okay, but let me go back to the first one. We'll still come back to the second one. Mm. Now, the relationship between hypertension and diabetes, mm. as uh, uh, as a matter of fact. Hmm. One of uh, uh, somebody who has diabetes. <laughs> already has a major risk factor for the development of hypertension. And the someone who has hypertension has a risk factor for the development of diabetes and complications that could come with this disease. So a lot of association between these two uh, disease entities. Okay, as a matter of fact, the uncontrolled hypertension and uncontrolled diabetes are the topmost cause of chronic kidney disease globally in the world. That, 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 that are two prominent causes of chronic kidney disease globally. Okay, so we, in medicine, we refer to them as comorbidity. Mm. Mm. Okay, now if you have two of them, your chances of having uh, complications that could come with uh, long standing hypertension are high. Of course, you have hypertensive heart disease and you have a uh, heart attack, cardiac infarction as well as stroke. Stroke, yeah. Okay, so that's the so association between the two. Okay, so okay. to the question I asked about salt. Now, back to the you question you asked about salt. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Okay, yes, that's and then the second one, one, really, mm -hmm. where, where is the heart located? Okay, we'll come back to the salt. Let's mm -hmm. start with the heart. Okay. Now, a, a, 
a good number of us may not have an idea. When we talk about heart, heart, mm -hmm. heart, we may not know exactly the location of the heart in the body. Or oh, how does it even work? How does it function? Uh, we said at the beginning that we're going to talk briefly on, that, uh, on the circulation of the heart, the anatomy. So quickly we can do that. Now, if you make a fist, I would like you to make a fist with your left hand. Okay, very small. You can see your fist mm -hmm. is smaller <laughs> than mine. Okay, that's okay. about the size of anybody's heart. So, so if you make a fist, it's about the si yes, it's about the size of your heart. So if you're a big person, you are close to being heartless. <laughs> <laughs> now if I see. Be, so if you're a big person, you have a big heart. It stands okay. to reason. Your heart is quite small too. Uh, no, but you time. won't wait a minute. Okay, ah, it's a lie. <laughs> okay, I'm let's happy. take it a step further. Okay. okay, put it on this part of your towards the left on this part of your. Uh, on the on my chest? yes, on the left side of the uh, manubrosternum bone. Okay. Okay. That's the location of the heart. It's on the left. It's on the left, almost about where you have your breast. Okay, mm -hmm. or a little below that. We have Salaudin. 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 Good, good morning. Good morning. How yeah. are you doing, sir? Fine. Okay. Go ahead with your question, sir. Yes, I want to ask about the apparatus being used. For the checking of a uh, high blood level, is it the, the, the what, which one is better? Is it the analog one or the, the now digital one that they are using? Which one is better? I think that takes him, takes you back the to my question. The they are using now mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make sure the apart uh, the high blood high blood pressure is it the digital one or the analog one <laughs> that they used to checking like thermometer. Thank you very, very much for that very important question. Uh, a little bit of that was asked earlier by Chief. Uh, from a medical perspective, the ones that are used in this part of the world, talking about the mercury sphig, I don't want to call the name in full, mm -hmm. sphig boma, no matter. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, that's the name in full. And as well as the aneroid type, okay, they are preferred. To the to the handheld or the battery powered uh, BP devices that one can use at home. There's also, apart from this, these ones that I've mentioned, there's also what we refer to as patient monitor, which of course checks the BP alongside other parameters. Okay. You can see a number of them in a number of hospitals. Some of them very colorful. Some of them can do ECG and a number of other things. Those are the preferred ones. Those are the ones that are the in thing now globally for some hospitals that have them in Nigeria. But that our uh, age long mercury thermometer is still very useful. If you can lay hands on patient monitor, that is preferred to the, the battery-powered ones that you can use at home. In a clinical setting, that is preferred. We have Matthew from Lagos. Matthew, <laughs> good morning. Morning, how are you today? Yeah, thank morning. you very much. Yes, I'm very fine. Yeah. Okay, how are you doing? Go ahead with your question, please. I want to ask this question because I have somebody suffering from a portrait cancer. Okay. This portrait cancer, does it have anything to do with uh, BP? Blood pressure. Okay. Does it have anything to do with blood, blood pressure? Blood pressure, yes. Yeah. Because I meant to understand through the doctors, uh, whatever, whatever. Whenever the thing is high, when the BP is high, the cancer, cancer uh, this thing increases. So that is what I want to find out. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, not just prostate cancers, cancers generally. Mm do not have any known cause. Mm. Okay, in medicine, we refer to them as unknown etiology. The causes are unknown. Also, for uh, hypertension, there are usually two types of hypertension majorly, the primary or essential hypertension and the non-essential hypertension. Now, the primary or essential hypertension which is responsible for 90 to 95% of all hypertensive cases. The cause is also unknown. Mm. That's the correlation I want. Okay, so 5% to 10% uh, uh, is actually the ones talking about uh, uh, non-essential hypertension is one that the cause can be traced, that have identifiable mm -hmm. causes, okay? But 
cancers generally don't have any known cause. However, there are some, some things or substances that are believed to be carcinogenic. A number of substances that are believed to be carcinogenic. Okay, some of them could be uh, 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 creams that contain... Uh, uh, body some, creams? Yes, some body creams that contain some chemical. I can't remember the name now. Okay, but back to your question. There doesn't seem to, there, there, there is no correlation between hypertension. There is a, a medical correlation between hypertension and prostate cancer in the sense that the general outlook, the general health of the person will be worse off if the person has a coexisting hypertension alongside the prostate cancer. Other than that, prostate cancer on its own cannot mm. cause hypertension. Okay. Neither can hypertension cause prostate cancer. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank mm. you. Okay. Now, yes. now back to the question, mm. that the mm. question you asked about the location of the heart. The heart. Uh, now, the heart has four chambers. And these four chambers made, okay, let me start by saying that the heart, the heart is, is subdivided into two halves. The right side of the heart as well as the left side of the heart. Now, this right side of the heart has two chambers as well. The left side has also two chambers. Okay. Now, what happens is that the circulation or circulatory, uh, uh, the, the, the blood starts coming in from the right side of the heart through the inferior, inferior vena cava as well as the superior vena cava. The blood that have gone round about the body returns to the heart mm. through the right side of the heart. Okay, now, the, blo the blood gets into, we have... Oka, Oka Urere. From Enugu. Good morning, sir. Oh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good to How have you on the sir? show. Okay, morning. Morning. Okay. Bye. He's gone. You need to make yourself audible. You need to speak a bit louder, okay, please. Morning. Turn down your TV volume, Mr. Oka. Very fine. Okay. Okay. How is it? Turn it down, please. Okay. Then Thank you. Right. Okay. The, the question I want to ask is that I'm turning it down. Yes, thank you. Is it okay now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. better. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. The question I want to ask when someone is walking and that person is just moving like not himself, and uh, I don't know what is causing it. Didn't we didn't get you, please. Can you say again? Uh, can you repeat yourself? Eh? Repeat, you yourself. repeat yourself. We didn't get please. what you said. Okay. Like now, when you just get up from the morning, in the early morning, then when you are walking and you can't you can walk where? Don't be like, hey, no, you. Okay. So I don't know what is the do you, do you feel dizzy? Huh? Do you feel dizzy? Mm. He, he, he said if you wake up in the morning yeah, and you yeah, can't walk well, you feel like if air is, is, air is blowing on you. Uh, I, well, I, think, I just wanted yes. to do a little clacking, but... Yes, you did well. <laughs> I think that uh, apparently that should be the problem that he's having. Now, usually, you can't lay hand on any particular disease entity to say that it can be responsible for that. The commonest, uh, one of the commonest diseases that we have, disease entities that we have in this uh, environment, mm -hmm. malaria, can give you such a picture. Yeah. Okay. You could wake up with all manner of tiredness, mm -hmm. you could feel dizzy, and all whatnot. Also, if you have hypoglycemia, if you probably didn't eat on time, that could also cause there are a number of causes. What is hypoglycemia? Hypoglycemia is when you have lower than normal blood sugar level in the blood. Okay. We have <laughs> Shegu from Lagos. Shegu, good morning. Calls are coming in. Good morning, Shegu. Hello. Yeah, hello. Good, good morning. Yeah, good, good morning. morning. Uh, Dr. Ba, good morning. Yeah, good morning, my brother. How are you today, sir? Yeah, fine. Chief, good, good morning. No. Good morning, Mr. Shegun. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. No, Slimmy, how are you doing? I'm very well. Good morning. Yes, first, I want to thank WAP TV for bringing on this program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shegun. And also, uh, thank you very much for this particular topic, you know, because from the estimates that you have given, uh, that about 20% of people uh, they are having it, but I'm sure that is not in Nigeria, because yeah. I'm sure 
On that scale, it will be about 99.5% of Nigerians that are having this. That is just on the light side, Mr. <laughs> Shebeng. That's just, you are just being sarcastic. So go ahead. Well, now the thing is, um, would you say, I mean, given this scenario, that uh, each family in Nigeria should own a portable pig hmm. and learn how to use apply it, to mm -hmm. use it, so that at least they can have an idea of uh, their hypertensive situation. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you, much. Shelby. You read my <laughs> mind. You read my mind. Uh, as a matter of fact, among the new guidelines, is one of the things that um, uh, these bodies that actually put up this new set of guidelines is one of the things they've encouraged people to do. Okay, because now, more than ever before, the awareness is now sky high. Okay, prior to this time, people who probably were getting the neighborhood of less than 114, 90, suddenly they're now told that they it's are... Not like, you know. hmm. No, no, not about the figures. It's not about the figures. It, it, it's about knowing that at that level that you probably think you're home and dry, hmm. that you're actually, you actually have a high risk of having heart attack, hmm. suffering uh, uh, stroke, even at that lower level, mm. that is frightening on its own. Mm. Okay, so that is what that is the. They are not just trying to uh, uh, work with the figure or play with the figures so to frighten mm. people. No, that's not the picture. But to let people know that at these lower uh, BP levels, you are predisposed to a number I of risks. I have to repeat my question. Okay, next week. thank you very much. I think. <laughs> Can't believe oh, really? Yeah.